Who would like to uh, start out with just kind of a description of what the show entails? Rick? Uh, yeah, I'd like to hear the answer. <laughs> okay, Robin? Uh, I'd like to defer to Jeff. <laughs> okay. It's going to be a great show. Uh, you know, the music to start, the music that we get to uh, fool around with and the history of, of that music and the history of everybody in the world basically knowing knowing the music and knowing that we, uh, we actually, I actually had to rehearse. It was the first time I had actually practiced and rehearsed since 1967 because uh, I started writing songs around then and, uh, and the fact that it was kind of placed in our hands through, through Jeff Emmerich and through uh, uh, actually, the Hollywood Bowl people uh, made us do an audition, and we didn't fail. Uh, and we ended up doing our first two shows for 38,000 people. Uh, I, I actually didn't invite anybody to come to the show because I didn't. I wasn't sure if we could pull it off, or at least my, I couldn't. And uh, actually, like I said, I had to rehearse. And I had to learn a guitar part because you can't jam the solo to uh, any of the Beatles songs and, and maybe get get away with it. So it's. Uh, I think we had, a, we had a great blueprint to start with. Let's take some questions from the audience. Yes, sir. But what was the genesis? Where did it begin? How did it initiate that specifically cheap trick would, would do Sergeant Pepper? Uh, well... I guess all of us grew up with the Beatles, listening to their music and stuff. I've been singing Beatles songs since I was 12 years old. So that's the immediate answer to that question. But um, I think the Beatles have had an influence on our band, Cheap Trick, <clears throat> and many other bands. Uh, that whole British invasion uh, made me go out and buy a guitar from Rick's dad and, uh, and uh, put a band together. So I think it started there. But this. Uh, actual Sergeant Pepper thing, we were asked to do it, actually, because uh, some of the people that were involved with the Hollywood Bowl thought that uh, they wanted to do a Sergeant Pepper show, kind of, but they didn't have a rock band. They didn't think of it that way at first, but one of the people decided to, to suggest Cheap Trick because he was a big fan of ours. And when it was brought up, they gave us a call, and we thought, okay, we could do that, I guess. <laughs> and that's kind of how it started. They came to the Wiltern Theater in Los Angeles, and uh, and we didn't make many mistakes that night. So it was like they thought that well, I, you know, we we passed the audition. It was like it wasn't something we were looking for. It, it, it found us, which was kind of cool. People have asked us to do crazier things than this. Yeah, you know, like being here. <laughs> but this is cool. This is a, this is a a new generation of. Uh, Las Vegas goers and music goers and music lovers and being with, with love here and all the different acts that preceded you know preceded us or preceded anybody here and uh, the Beatles never played here but their music has played all over the world and this is going to be kind of an interesting destination and uh, like with once again I'm, I'm, I'm surprised to see Jeff Hammer here I, I didn't know you were going to be here today that would have done something special yes sir Put our name in the marquee. Yeah. This is a true story because they thought at the time cheap trick would indicate prostitution. So yeah. not only did you guys And come your point is <laughs> <laughs> So not only did you guys come a long way, uh Davis has come a long way. This is great to see a rock and roll man in the hill. What do you think of the evolution of rock and roll here in Vegas? Well, they still didn't want to put our name up there. They just wanted to call us Sergeant Pepper Live. <laughs> I think the morals of Vegas have really come come around. 